Welcome to another Eric Learns the Hard Way, episode two. Today we're going to talk about deliverables, um, why you need them, and how to do them right. So let's get started. Deliverables are arguably the most important part of any contract, and you should always have a contract. But first, what exactly is a deliverable? Well, that's what it is. It is exactly what it is that you deliver. So in a nutshell, what exactly is a deliverable? A deliverable is exactly what your client gets when it's all done. Now, part of the contract should be how much you get paid for giving them what they get. But it's super important that you define what it is, especially if you are in a creative business like I am, commercial photography or video. Because every time I take on a job, it's a little bit different than what I have done before. And certainly on your client's end, it's different than what they've had done before. Because at the very least, if it's the first time they've hired you, it's new and you need to define what it is. It's not such a big deal when you're ordering french fries. I mean, you kind of got three options, small, medium, and large, and you kind of know what to expect. There may be the exception for a curly fries or a sweet potato fries, but you, you know what I mean. Um, so when we're doing something creative, you have to specify exactly what it is they get for how much money they give you. And I propose that you should have a contract with deliverables, even if you're doing something for free for someone, and in some cases, especially so. So a deliverable, when we're talking about a creative thing, is exactly everything that you can specify. It is literally a line on my contract that says deliverables, and that will say maybe um, seven high-resolution images in JPEG format, full color. I don't specify it to that degree, right? Because they expect it to be color. But it, overdoing it is never a problem. Underdoing it absolutely can be. Anything that you do, you need to specify exactly what they get when they leave the transaction. It's the things that they get. Now, I recommend that you also specify licensing if you're doing things like uh, software, music, video, photography, writing, so on like that. But I think that that's worth having its own section. So a little bit of a story as to how deliverables ended up as a thing on my contract. I was asked to photograph a group of business professionals in a conference room. I do it all the time, not that hard, not that big a deal. But the catch was this, is that outside the conference room was, was um, a view of the mountains. And behind the people, as I was going to photograph them, were the mountains. Again, that would be normally not such a big deal. But because of the windows, there would be lots of reflections from the studio lights I was going to use. Well, that was a problem. So what I proposed is I would do one picture for the mountains and then one picture of the group. And I would Photoshop the two together. It's the view that you'd get with your eyeballs. But with the camera, it was a little bit harder to do. What that meant is not only did I have to take two pictures separately, and paste them together, but I had to cut all around every single person in that group, uh, there were probably about 20 people, so that it would have a perfect cutout of the mountains behind them. So that part, not a big deal. So I quoted that and said, well, this is how much it's gonna be because it's fairly labor intensive and you get, you know, a, a, you get uh, a Photoshop version of one of those. And the client said, okay, so here's what else is gonna happen. There is going to be a pie fight. It's like, what? He said, yeah, yeah, here's the deal, is that some of the executives thought that this would be a really fun thing to do as kind of a, a thing to get people all uh, on the on team, teamwork kind of a thing. We're going to give everybody t-shirts, and when they go to the break room to get their t-shirts, we're going to cover everything in the boardroom in plastic, and then they'll all come in for their second team photo in their t-shirts this time, not their business wear, but their t-shirts over their business wear. And then we're going to hand everybody a pie tin full of whipped cream. And then this on three, they can just all throw it at each other and it'll just be awesome. And I want you to take like lots of pictures as this pie fight is happening. I'm thinking, well, that sounds a little bit ill-advised, but I said, okay, well, it's your people. I guess you do what you want. 
So we'd done the formal portrait. They went and got their t-shirts. They all came back into the room that was now covered with plastic. They're like, what the heck is going on? Then people came in and handed everybody a pie tin full of whipped cream. And the executives were like, three, two, one, and started throwing pies around. It was as bad as you would imagine. Some people had a great time, um, but you could tell from the photographs that some people were not looking forward to this moment. Um, but my job was to take pictures, and so I did. Okay, pie fight's over. I send the client proofs of everything. So I pick the ones that you want. Uh, the client picked the one for their um, portrait where I did the Photoshop work, the, the group portrait. I did that. It looked really, really nice. It took maybe an hour or two to do the cutout work, but it looked really nice. And they said, well, and I want this, 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 and this of the pie fight. And I was like, well, okay, that sounds fine to me. Um, go for it. And so I sent them the uh, the cutout, the portrait. And he said, that's really beautiful. I really like it. And I sent him all the pie fight photographs. Well, for the pie fight, because they didn't want to get everything dirty, I had agreed to put a disposable backdrop uh, behind them. It was a, a seamless piece of paper. And of course, I got covered with whipped cream and it was all nasty and everything. Uh, we just threw that away. Well, the client says, well, behind the pie fight, there's the, uh, the seamless paper background. I'm like, yeah. He said, well, I want the mountains behind there. It's like, well, no, because we hung up the, the paper to keep the windows clear. And you said you wanted the mountains behind the, the, the group portrait. And the client says, no, 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 no. I wanted the mountains behind everything. I want the mountains behind every single shot of the pie fight that I, that I chose. I don't know, five, six, seven pictures. And I said, no way. I mean, the bid that I gave you was to do one Photoshop um, because, you know, it took me an hour or two. Let's just say it was uh, an hour. Okay. And Photoshop time is relatively expensive. And he said, no, no, no. I want, I want the mountains behind every single picture. And so you have to Photoshop the mountains into every single one. And at that point, I was like, no way, man, I, I'm out. There's just no way that you asked for that. There's no way that I quoted that. And I, I went back into the emails and tried to make it clear that like, no, that's not what I had agreed to. And that's not what you asked for. But there wasn't a specific line on the contract before we started that said, you get one Photoshopped image. I didn't have that in my contract. I'm not sure if he really made an assumption or if he was just trying to get a bunch of work for free. Um, but the, the problem is I didn't have it on my contract. And so immediately after this whole event, which by the way, I ended up telling the, this, this client, I said, look, there's no way I quoted to do that for free. It's going to cost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And there's, you don't want to pay it. He's like, no way. I said, and I'm not going to do it for free. And so you can either have no photographs and no fee, just you pay nothing, or you do what I thought the deal was, which is you get one Photoshopped picture and then your pie fight with the, uh, with the paper background. And we ended up settling it. It never worked together again, which is fine by me and maybe by him too. But it taught me an important lesson. And that is, I have to tell a client exactly what they are going to get when they're done with the transaction with me. You may have heard the expression, uh, assumptions make an ass out of you and me. It's a, it's a funny little saying, but I'll tell you what assumptions do for a creative. Assumptions make creatives poor. Because here's what happens, is that when there's an assumption between you and the client, and the client's expecting you to do something that's included in that quote, but you didn't think you had to do it, that client is expecting you to eat that. They're expecting you to make up the difference. I've been in business long enough to know very seldom does a client say, oh, silly me. Of course, that's going to cost a lot more money. And I assumed you were going to include it, but you weren't. And so I will gladly pay extra for that. That's happened exactly zero times in my career. If it happens to you, awesome. Keep those clients, right? But assumptions come back and make you look bad. And if you have to eat it, they also make you poor. Okay, imagine deliverables like this. You go to a store, uh, you see a big screen TV you like, the uh, salesperson's, you know, switching from TV to TV. And so you pick one, you go home, you unbox it, and you're looking for the remote control. I mean, there's one 
pictured on the box, but you don't, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't find one. And you call the store up and you say, Hey, I didn't get a remote control. And like, Oh yeah, that's in the super tiny type. Um, that remote control is not included. That's a uh, $49 extra. Would you be happy as a consumer? No, you wouldn't be. You'd feel ripped off. You'd feel, well, technically, yeah, it might have said it in tiny type that it's not included, remote control not included, sold separately, whatever. You don't want to be, you will not get that client's business again. You know, you might stick it to them once, but you will not get business from them again. And I don't want you to be that kind of creative. So if you know that there are certain things that they might assume they're getting that they're not going to get, it's your job to let them know, hey, this isn't included. It's not going to happen. If you want it, here's this extra line item. It's a way you can save money if you want to. So as you write deliverables, be very clear and very concise exactly what they get. That makes for happy customers and makes for creatives who can actually make a living. If you've experienced misunderstandings with clients and customers, go ahead and I'd love to hear about them. You know, put them in the comments. Uh, do hit the thumbs up thing. I'm starting the channel and could use all the feedback that I can get. That's a positive thing. And eventually, yeah, I want to earn your subscription. But for now, if you found something useful in this, please share it with another creative. Share it with a friend who you think could benefit from this. That's it for this episode. Hope you don't have to learn this the hard way like I did. Out.